Wow. We are so excited because tonight we have our guest tonight is Lavar Arnold and the the name and the topic tonight is that prison chains can be broken. And so Lavar, you shared your testimony with me and I tell you I was amazed. So so explain to me your journey of, of, of from nine years old, some of the things you got involved with. Um, at nine, you said you started to smoke marijuana. Yes, yes. Tell us how that started. Um, I got introduced. Into uh, what? Into marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, by a, um, one of my friends who was also nine years old. Nine year old friend. Yes. Yes. And actually start smoking and it felt good. It felt really so good. so little boys experimenting, boys experimenting and he found it somewhere yes. and you smoke it because it's it's natural for kids to experiment, you yes, know. Yes. And but the thing about marijuana that it is so addictive. And so you experimented and did the parents not catch you and no. scold you? No. You we hid. Always, we hid. You hid. We always yeah and wait till it wear off then we go home and wait till it wear off yes. and then you go, then home. go home so so you know at 90 it's gonna wear off yes. so then then it became a regular habit, became a regular habit. like at nine year old like yes. how often would you smoke would you um, experiment in, again in not i mean when i was nine years old it took me like, probably like four a day four I smoke like four times a day. You spoke you smoke four times a day at nine years old? Nine years old. Yes. Were you not in school? I was in school. So were you smoking at school? I smoked at school in the back of the school. I smoked yeah. between sessions. I smoked before I go to school. I smoked after school. Wow. So it was a lifestyle for me. Yeah. Well, I think this is the, the, the first time I've ever heard of a nine-year-old having a lifestyle of marijuana and speak, and smoking four times a day. So, of course, at that time, you didn't think of addiction. No. It was a I big word. You didn't know what addiction, right? But you just kept doing it. Do at that. what point in your life, at what age, you think you recognize, look, I cannot do without this? About when you think that would have happened? When I was like 18. When you were 18, yes. you could not do without I it then. Could not do without it. So when the addiction came upon you, like what, what, you, you had to, you, you, you feel like you had to get this I thing feel like or I what? Had to, I feel like I had to, just at any means. At any means. Necessary. Meaning? If I had to steal, if I had to lie, if I had to rob someone, whatever I have to do just to get that. Marijuana, Just and you know it's amazing because I think different nations are now legalizing the yes. marijuana, and you are saying then that it is very addictive. It, it is very addictive because we're hearing that it's not addictive. It is, and they're legalizing it now, and yes. young people are experimenting, experimenting more, yes. and everything. So at eighteen, you got involved then to the point of addiction. Yes. So at eighteen years old. You had finished school? Did you, you finish school? Actually, I didn't finish school. Yeah, when did you drop out of school? I dropped out of school when I was like 17. 17, so you didn't finish. Didn't finish. And then after school, after you dropped out of school, then what were you doing? Just hanging around. Just hanging around? Just hanging around. So how did you get the marijuana? You had to buy it, so where you got money? Uh, we, we used to sell drugs. You were selling it? Yeah. So, so after then, when you get addicted, then you sell it for the habit I sell sake. It for the habit sake. For the, for the habit sake. For so you got sake. into the drug business. Yes. 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 And yes. at that time, did your mother know you were my selling mother, and smoking? My mother did not know. Did she know you were smoking? No, she did not. Okay, or selling. She did not know. And then it progressed, then, Lavar, that you got involved with a whole group. Yes. Almost like a gang. Yes. Tell us, tell us what 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 a gang life is like. Um, how did you did you did you have to get initiated in the gang, or you just knew them and you just joined? I knew them. So yes. I just joined. You just joined. Yes. So how, at what point you know I'm a member because you have to be a member of the gang, right? How did you become a member of the gang? 
Well, we had to do certain things. Either they sent us out to steal, they sent us out to to even just just try to to take anything we can to be a part of the group. To prove that to you prove that initiation. I, uh, yes. 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 And you know, for parents that are 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 you know watching and you recognize that you're you're praying now for your children and your son is beginning to act a certain way. Um, now we're seeing where we progress from just being um, smoking with a friend to actually selling a friend. And they're asking that you speak louder. Okay. Yes. And so um, so so with it with the gang what was gang life like you you get up in the day and you're not working no because no. gang life is your life yes right yes so what is gang life like it's it's like i, I then i thought it was fun mm -hmm. to just wake up in the morning and go hang out um just hanging out on the street um selling marijuana it's it's like a lifestyle i i just Every day, same thing over and over, um, giving trouble, you know, just being wanted. Yeah. So, did you get into fights? Yes, I did. So, I did so get in a lot of fights because of the gangs. Because of the gangs. So, were, was it gang fighting gangs or gang you fighting gangs? So, you had to get involved. I in get fights. involved. In so, what kind of weapons would you use? You like knives, stone. One point, there was guns. Right, but no one got hurt. No one got hurt. No one got hurt with the gun, but knives, yes. Yes, and at what stage now you left and you went to Canada at one time? Um, right, you, you left Jamaica, you went yes, to Canada. Went to Canada. Yes, and when you got to Canada now, did you have it in your head and your heart that I'm coming for a new life? Or you yes, didn't I want did. it? Did you want a new I life? I did want a new life because of the life I was li living in wasn't good. I know it wasn't good. I know it was wrong. You knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. So deep down, when you when you see the gangs going and they act like you know they're they're big, they're tough, and they're but you knew it was wrong all along in all your head. All along, I knew. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't controlling my life. You were not in control. I was not in control mm -hmm. because things that I have done, I could not be in control. I could not be in my right state of mind for the things that for you the did. things that I have did. So then the marijuana then probably induced you to do some things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when you come from one country to another country, yes. now, so it, you did think you're going to change your yes, life? Yes, I did. I did thought so. You, you wanted to? I wanted to. So what did you do then for this new opportunity? Well, I came here because uh, my mom, yes, so I want to, you know, being around my mom, I want to do the right thing. Right. I ended up start smoking back here. Mm -hmm. I started smoking. I hid it from my mom. She did not know. I went out to smoke, come back in. She would not know. But she knew, but she didn't approach me at the time. So I came here. I ended up start hanging out again. Mixing up with the wrong crowd. Started smoking, started selling marijuana again. Wow. And you started to sell. And I started to sell again. Mm -hmm. And so did you get in trouble here with the law? I did. In Canada? In Canada. I did. But it wasn't for marijuana. It wasn't for marijuana. It wasn't for what marijuana. was that for? That was for crack cocaine. Crack cocaine. Crack cocaine. So you, you progressed from marijuana to crack cocaine? Yes. At, at what age did you start the crack? Starting okay. when I was 23. 23? Yes. So why did you feel it necessary to go into something stronger? What happened there? Did was you just experiment? Money. It was more money. To sell or to? To sell. To sell. Oh, so you were selling crack cocaine. Yeah. But you, were you using it? No, I never used it. Oh, you I were just used. selling it. I was just selling it. Because it wow. was more money. Than, so it's more money. Than, than more money. So you're, you're professional. You're, prof you're a professional yeah. drug a dealer professional there. Drugs. That was what you were trained for yeah. and that was what you were doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so in that world, though, it would have been um, scary as well, right? Because yes, with that doesn't come violent, does it? Yes, a, a lot of violence with it. And you have to walk with protection, meaning walking with a gun. Mm -hmm. You have to protect yourself in, in that type of environment. Mm -hmm. So it was it was very scary. You know, it's you know the Bible says that the the, the, the 
Satan comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. And when I'm hearing this now and hearing someone who was in the gang, then you realize that for him to steal, for him to kill, for him to destroy, he has to find agents. And so he has to find people to work it through because demons can't just kill. They have to find a human vessels then yes. to, 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 to do the killing. Yes unless it's the occult we're getting into, which is another level. And so you got involved in that. And then at what point you left Canada and you went to, to, to America? Yes, when I was 25. So when you went to America at 25, here again, one country to another country to another country, the same person going. Yes. Did you want to change your life at that time? Yes, because I was supposed to go to school. And I did not go to school. So what were you supposed to study? Accounting and payroll. Accounting and payroll? Yes. And I did not study. So did you apply? I did apply. Did you get accepted? Yes, I did. And then what? I never got in school. You never went one day I to school? I never went one day to school. And why is that, Lavar? Because I saw the life that my family was living and I wanted to be in that life. So, so what, what was the life now of your family now? You're talking uncles, cousins, aunties, who? Uncles, uncles cousins, brothers. And what were their kind of lifestyle? Um, we, were, we were involved in uh, marijuana, selling marijuana. That's why I wanted to be in that life. That life was appealing to that you? That life was appealing to me. And what, 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 what was appealing about it? The money. The money. The money. Yeah. The lifestyle. Uh, the lifestyle of what? Of, of living the fancy life, living the life of having nice cars, nice house. Wow. That type of life. And so tell us now what happened when you ended up getting into prison. Tell um, us about that. What I, happened? I got caught. Yes. With a, a gun and a lot of money. A lot of money. Almost a million dollars, and um, I went to prison. And I fought for six months. They wanted to give me twenty years in prison, and I only did two. Two years. Two years. So you did two years in prison. I did two years. In so tell, well, tell so tell us about prison life now. So um, did you did you get you hear of you know violence in the prisons and so many people can get hurt etc. So you, so what was it like the day you walked into prison? Did did that not affect your heart? Like, yes, it what, was. what did you? How did you feel? I had migraine for almost a week because I never been in this environment, and I watched a lot of people got hurt. I watched many fights. People got stabbed. I watched people got killed in prison. In prison. So it's violent it in is, the prison. It's violence, and this is in California. So you have gangs in the prison. In the prison, <laughs> you have racial profile, wow. blacks and Mexicans. And so it was a lot of different racial profiles. So there was a lot of violence. So did you have fear that this is a hostile uh, environment behind bars? Yes, I had a lot of fear. I had to be on guard every given day, every minute, not knowing what's gonna happen. So, I mean, there's times you can't sleep. There's times you have to sleep in your clothes, your shoes, because anything can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, um, I met up with this guy in prison, an elderly guy for me, and he gave me a couple words, a couple words from um, scriptures to read. And that was Psalms 121 and Psalms 91, and I lived with those two scriptures for two years. Really? And you would read it every day. Every day. Psalm one twenty one and and yes. Psalm ninety one. Ninety one. Yes. And that was your. So you were then calling on God for protection. For protection. Wow. Yes. So fear, the torment was coming again. So prison life is 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 rough. Yes, it's it is. rough. Yes, this it is, is not something you know. And I think that should be deterrent. You know, for young people getting involved in this lifestyle, it might look good with a nice car. It might look good, but you know, it, it is in a violent, rough, dangerous life 
of hell and earth. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because here you are selling for Satan, you're into that thing, then he put you in prison. Yes. Now you are at the mercy, yes. you know, yes. of violent people and they can attack you at any time. Yes. Wow. And so then it did you have any fights? Did, did any did anybody at, uh, try to fight you or did you get into any altercations in prison? I mean People Did try. you have to behave yourself? Like, what could stir it up? What could stir um, up a fight? Anything. If someone come at you for something and you tell them no, that could stir a fight. If you look at someone wrong, that could stir a fight. Anything could start a fight. Saying the wrong words could start a fight. Mm -hmm. Taking someone's stuff could start a fight. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I, I always try to stay out of people's way. Wow. There's time when, so were you alone in your cell or no, you were sharing? I'm in a cell where there's at least 800 people. So no, but your yeah. own room. Like, no, it, it never was a home room. I thought that, I was... that... That was for only people with bigger crimes. The bigger crimes? Murder. So, right. So they but get their own room. They get their own room. Yes. But with you, their bunk bed is right bunk across? Beds with a big room. One eight, big room. One big room with at least 800 people. No. Yes. One big room with eight hundred people. So there was no privacy. There was no. There was no privacy. Never was privacy. Even when you take a shower, use a towel, anything, it's never privacy. Wow. Never. So 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 then this elderly man now, yes. he just took a liking to you. Yes. And he was a Christian. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't a Christian. But he gave you the Bible. He gave me the Bible. <laughs> Because he had been there more than 20 years. Oh my. What was he there for? He was in um, a lot of, he was in gang school uh, in California. Yes. So he was, he was doing it all. Wow. And, and he was there for 20 years. And he was there for 20 years when I got And they promised that they were, you were going to get 20 years. And they promised that I was going to get 20 years. So he gave you two scriptures. Yes. Psalm 121 and Psalm 91. And Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from when cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord. And when you are saying that, Navar, were you praying to God or talking to God? Did you Were you really asking for help or what? I was asking for help, but I didn't know who I was asking for help from. Yeah. But you, but you were asking for help from a God. From a God. You knew that you needed supernatural protection. I knew that I needed protection. And then he also told you also to to um, to read Psalm ninety one. Yes, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. You know, God is a God of mercy, and here you are. Um, a young man that he knew he lived his life, but from nine years old, the enemy got him trapped. And you know, Satan is evil, and he's no respecter of persons. And so here it is now, that nine-year-old somebody give him free yes. drugs. And then they would keep um, trying the drugs and using the drugs from nine years old, and now he is in prison. So just like how God begins with the end in mind, Satan also begins with the end in mind. And in, his, in the end in mind, he wanted you killed because you have come close to some near-death experience, eh? some of the escapes that happened. Like even you were saying, I didn't know it was a big place with 800 people living in the same one big place. But you're saying that sometimes you'd be in the prison and, and you just as you leave, something will happen. Something will so happen. it's like what? Meaning? I mean, one point, um, because you have one prison called a session. That's where you go to find out which prison you're going to go. And you stay there for three months. And the morning that I leave, because they wake you up like four in the morning. And I leave four in the morning and by 6.30, there was a riot. People got stabbed. People end up in a hospital. People are killed mm. in that same place that you were. That I was. So God was there all along. I, I did not know at the time. And you did not know. I did not and you say there were other times too when you had narrow escapes that just as you leave something happened. What yes. were some of the other times? Um, sitting, you said sitting on yes. the streets or or um, what? I remember hanging out in the corner 
Oh man, with a group of us as guys. And, and which which country was this that? This is in Jamaica. Okay, because there's Jamaica, <laughs> there's New York, there's California, there's yes. Canada, and the same thing recurred. Recur. So at one time in Jamaica, yes. you were sitting at yes. a, a group of us and I, and it was like someone told me to get up and leave. And I get up and I leave. And as I, because I was close to my house, and as I just walk in, I heard a lot of shots in that same Gunshots. Gunshot in that same corner. Yes, and people were shot. People were the shot. same of the people you were with. The same people. Yeah. Same. So did any of your family members or friends that you know in the gang, the cocaine business that died, actually got killed by gun, yes. shot? Yes. Who, who is it that day? My brother got killed. And how old was he? My brother was 20 years old. 20? 20 years old. I got two uncles. So your brother got shot by who? By um, gang members. Gang member, so he was in the gang too. He was in the gang. Yeah, and then the other one, your uncle. My uncle. My, I have two uncles. Two one, uncles. One by police and one by gang members. Two of them were shot. Yes. <laughs> one by police and one by gang members. My God, I, I'm telling you, you know, you see these things on the movie, but we're talking about somebody who lived the life, and you said there was a very fearful time when the police came to look for your uncle. Yes. Because he was a dealer. Yes. And you were sleeping. And I was sleeping. So the police could have thought it was him. Yes. You were him. Yes. And what did the police do? Um, I, I yeah. slept with my sheet over my face. Right. And they pull away the sheet and I was looking straight into a gun. And they put the gun in your in face? In my face. Yes. Like this close. Wow. And um, I, did not, I, I did not move. I couldn't move. Something was holding me for me not to move. My God, because if he had yes, moved, had you know, you'd be stirring up yes. and then you could have yes. jumped and start to take away the gun and everything. So because you did not because move, then they, they didn't have any reason yes. to, to shoot. Yes. Because you could have defended yourself. Yes. yes. So you did not move. So I did not move. And did that uncle get shot at some point? Yes, a later time. Yeah. So when you get shot um, in the gang, you go to the hospital? Um, some of them. Ooh, because nice. you see on the TV, you don't go to the hospital yeah. because then if they see a gun, then they have to figure out yeah. the bullet, they have to figure it out. So oh, sometimes so they do, sometimes some do, they don't. Some don't. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I would say, Lavar, then obviously God has been keeping you. And you said you never know. You were even praying. He did not dwell it in the secret place yes. of the Most High. But you knew there was a supernatural, but you didn't know the God that you were even crying for. Yes. And you know, the Bible talk about the unknown God, yes. you know, and that's what you're experiencing. So at what point did you get to know God, this mm. God that is so great, that is protecting you, <laughs> I mean, from country to country to country? Like... Um, it was, um, say, five years ago. My wife's sister in, invited us to church. And um, I used to... I had one foot in, one foot out. Um, I remember when I like, went to the church and you kept preaching about marijuana. And I'm like, oh, is she talking about me? Yeah, because every Sunday you used to just keep marijuana and this what it does to you. And uh, I used to get up and leave because <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. And I kept coming. Something still pulled me. I kept coming. And I used to just lie to my wife just to leave to go smoke. Just to leave to go smoke. And I remember 2017, uh, I think it was um, Kingdom and Forces. Conference. Conference. Kingdom and Forces. Mm -hmm. And um, the apostle um, called for altar call. And he was on the other side, and I was on the other side. And there was something that came So over. you were at the altar? I was at the altar. But he was praying on the yes. other side. And I was on the other side. Alone with God. Alone with God. And what happened? Something just came. I wasn't sure. I did not know at the time. Come. And what happened to you? And I was all over the place. I on the floor? On the floor. I was jumping. I was screaming. I was shouting. And that very night, I knew something happened. Mm. Because everything left me. Wow. I did not smoke. 
I've been free for two years. Wow. I've been free from marijuana for two years now. Since that one encounter Since that with one God. Encounter with yeah. God. And you see, people of God, that's why we call it Kail conversations. Because the, the word Kail is a Hebrew word for power and great and mighty. And when we call God El Kail, it means the most high God, the mighty God, the God who is greater. And here it is, this man who would lie to smoke, steal if he had to do whatever, at an altar where Jesus came. Oh my, Jesus is the great savior. He is the great deliverer. And he's standing there and God himself because of a praying mother. And you know, I have to commend you mothers for keep praying through and praying through and praying through. And he was at that altar and the spirit of God came upon him. He fell on the floor. Then he started to wreathe, start to scream because demons were leaving him. You see, the supernatural is, is, is real people of God. Because when you open yourself to marijuana, when you open yourself to that kind of lifestyle with violence and, and selling cocaine and being a Satan of, of the uh, uh, um, agent of the devil, then you give Satan the right to possess you and allow demons to live inside of your bodies. That's why marijuana is so dangerous because it opens the doors to demonic possession. And so here it is a young man that was so possessed by demons that he could not do without the, the drugs. And he was a seller. And that drug will make you lie, it will yes. make you steal, yes. it will make you kill yes. because the, the, what is in you is crying out for the next fix. Yes. But God is greater. God is greater. And you know that, that, that song that says, I lift up my eyes to the hill from when cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord. And that was the verse that somebody gave him in prison. Yes. You can imagine 800 people in prisoners yes. in one big room. Yes. And an elderly man will go to this young man, Lavar, and say, take these two scriptures and pray it every night to protect yourself. It is amazing. And you just kept doing it without understanding the totality, but God protected you. So it is safe to say that you're alive tonight yes. because of God because Almighty. Of God Almighty, yes. Only God could Only have preserved God. you. Your brother shot here, uncle died, brother died, people around you, and God protect you. Yes. And even in the prison, he was there with you. You know, David says that even if I made my bed in hell, God will never leave me alone. And so God visit this young man because even the, in the prison, because he could have been shot right there. And I, I, I'm telling you, God is El Kayil. He is the most high. He is mighty. He is great. He is savior. He is deliverer. And whether it's a prison, physical prison, or whether it's a mental prison, or whether it's an emotional prison, there is no God like Jehovah. And Jesus is the greatest name. Yes. He can set the captives free. I'm here to tell you that prison chains can be broken. Yes. Because when Lavar came out of prison, because they actually deported him back to Canada, yes. and he came here, started the same lifestyle again, and this time God says, okay, I will set you free because your mother is praying. Oh my God. He whom the Son set free is free indeed. And the prison that was in his soul it's one thing to be in the prison physically, but it's another thing that you are carrying the prison because he was, come, he was bound by Satan. The addiction bound him that he could not be free except God himself set you free. I am telling you, that's why even when we think about the Kayil pillars, you know, the, the power. This is Kayil power, supernatural power that no man touched him at the altar. God came down upon him and he fell on the floor, started to read, started to scream as one by one demons was leaving his body. Because when God comes in, demons flee.
Oh, wow. I, I'm going to pray for you tonight because whatever circumstances you're in, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is greater. And once he comes into your life, demons has got to go in Jesus' name. And so the Bible says, you know, has that verse, call upon the Lord. I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord. And there's another verse that says, they cry to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. And then he does three things. Number one, he brought them out of darkness. And this is an example of darkness. So dark that you can't say no. So dark that you're addicted, no, you're dying, but you still want to do it anymore. Darkness, they saved them out of deepest gloom. Being locked away in that prison cell and you can't even sleep sometimes. You have to have your clothes on. You don't know if somebody's going to attack you in the night. You can just look at somebody and they start a fight just because you look. I mean, the hostile environment where there's no protection. And then, not only does he deliver you from darkness, deliver you from the deepest gloom, despair, but then he broke away their chains. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what happened to Lavar. He broke the chains and he is now set free. He and his wife are both free. They have three lovely kids. He has four children and God is so good. And I'm here to tell you, whatever chains that binds you, whether it's the chain of poverty, whether it's the chain of depression, whether it's the chain of fear, whether it's the chain of addiction, when Jesus comes in, Satan has to go. He breaks the chain. Our God is greater. And I want you to write me because the conversation can continue even when we finish with this time because we're here to pray for you. Let us know. And mothers, in case you have sons and daughters that are in this now because it's prevalent in schools now, it's prevalent everywhere. It is highly addictive, people of God. Marijuana is addictive. You call it weed, you call it whatever, it is addictive and it affects the brain cells of your mind. You can think straight, you can act straight, and you do whatever because it demands of you that it will control you for life but not over Jesus resurrected by he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And we're going to be praying for you. And once you send us the prayer request, we're also going to continue with the prayer. Thank you so much for joining us again this week on Kyle Conversations. And next week, we're going to be here again the same time. Thank you so much, LaVar, for coming and sharing so openly. And what a testimony to see that there is no God like Jesus Christ. That is the name that is above every other name. So God bless you. See you next week, the same time. And remember, we are a Kyle generation. <laughs>